Hello friends, welcome to Quarantine Art with Miss Mitchell. I'm sorry I haven't made a video the last couple days. As you know, the shelter in place order got extended again on Friday and I just kind of needed to think about what that meant for quarantine art. And as you can see, I've decided to continue. However, moving forward, I think I'll be posting just two or three videos per week. Um, and I'll let you know exactly what days I'll be doing that so you know when to expect a new video. But today we're gonna be making cowboy portraits and actually, wait, who is that standing six feet away over there? What? Um, are you a cowgirl? Yep. Cool, I don't think I've ever met a real life cowgirl before. Weird. Do you like ride horses and lasso cows and ride on the range and stuff? Sure do. That is so cool. Would you mind if maybe I drew a portrait of you? All right. Oh my gosh, thank you. I'm gonna go do it right now and I'll bring it back and show you. Come on, let me show you how we're gonna do it. To make our cowboy portraits, you will need a colorful piece of paper, a pencil. I'm gonna be using a dark colored chalk pastel and some colorful acrylic paints. If you don't have those things, that's okay. After you get your portrait drawn, you can color it using something else. But if you choose to paint, you'll also need something to pour and mix your paints on, as well as a cup of water with a paintbrush. Before we get started, I wanna show you a few examples of kid art that has been a result of this project. I've taught this lesson a few times and it always turns out so, so cool. So here's a few pictures of kid art. So a portrait is a picture of a person, in this case, a picture of a cowboy or a cowgirl. And just look how amazing these turned out. Really good proportion of the faces, lots of bright colors, fun little details. Each one is so unique and cool. All right, so we need to start by drawing the face of our cowgirl or cowboy. I'm definitely gonna draw the cowgirl I just met in my yard. And you're gonna start just by drawing this nice big oval. This is kind of like their school picture. It's just gonna be their head and shoulders. So draw a nice big oval, plenty of room for all of the features. And then believe it or not, your eyeballs are actually halfway exactly between the top of your head and your chin. Try it right now. Tap your head, tap your chin, go look in the mirror. Exactly halfway, it's crazy. Usually everybody tries to put them a little bit higher, like up here, but they're actually halfway exactly between the top of your head and your chin. So I like to just draw a little dotted line right there. I can erase it later just to show me where my eyeballs are gonna be. And then in this bottom half that you just made, you're gonna split that in half again. That line is gonna be for your nose. And then in this bottom quarter that you just made, you're gonna split it in half one more time. And that's where your lips are going to be. For your eyeballs, I usually just start by drawing a football shape. It's always tricky to make a match, but nobody's perfect. They don't have to be exact. Do two little football shapes. And then I put a circle in the middle of that. For the lovely iris. And then don't forget a pupil right in the middle. And then you know I love a good twinkle. I usually put another little circle here for the twinkle. And then go ahead and draw a nose. One way I like to draw a nose is I kind of draw this weird shape to start and then I add the nostril covers. I do a little sideways raindrop, dip down in the middle, and then a sideways raindrop pointing the other direction on the other side. Can you see all that? Yeah, it's my weird nose shape. And then I just add the nostril covers, boom. It's like a perfect nose every time, I love it. And then for lips, I usually like to draw the middle line first so I can kind of decide what shape it's gonna be, if she's smiling or frowning. And then I just add each lip. So here's her top lip, here's her bottom lip. <gasps> wow, looks just like the cowgirl in my yard. And then don't forget that you have a neck and it's not a little tiny stick down here holding up that noggin. It's actually almost as wide as your whole face. So you're gonna draw two little lines there. And then you can draw whatever kind of collared shirt your cowgirl or cowboy is wearing. My cowgirl was kind of wearing a cool wrap, so I'm just gonna do a little crisscross like that. And then your shoulders are another thing that's always a lot wider than anybody thinks. I'm just gonna draw a line going right off the page for her shoulders. All right, and then whatever kind of hairdo you wanna do. But my favorite part of this whole thing is adding the cowboy hat because you get to draw this hilarious bean shape right on top of her head. It starts over here, kind of almost equal with her eye on the outside of her head. And you go up and over, back down to the top of her head, up and over, back down to her other eyeball. Put a bean behind her head. And then 
uh, right here, you're gonna match this shape of the brim of this hat and just kind of cover up part of her forehead because that looks kind of cray cray. And then erase that little line. Boom, you just put a hat on her. And then you can make the top of her hat, which is kind of just an M shape. Just make sure that these M lines come down and they would actually fit her head instead of a little tiny M like this. That wouldn't really fit. All right, I'm liking it so far. I'm going to add some hair right here for her. Kind of coming over. And she definitely had ears, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, definitely had ears. Just kind of simple. A little more hair here. And then I think she had a braid that was coming down over here, which I just usually do kind of like a little crisscross pattern for braids. All right, I like that. All right, when you have all the parts of your cowgirl or cowboy's face just where you want them, we're gonna outline them with that dark colored chalk pastel, or you could use a Sharpie or a crayon, whatever you want. And we're just gonna add a nice bold outline to all of these parts that you just drew on your cowgirl, you're gonna trace everything you did with pencil, you're gonna go right over it with your dark, bold line. Okay, I was just cracking up that whole time because I just realized I didn't give her eyebrows. Don't forget, you have eyebrows. Right about here. She probably also needs some eyelashes. Boys have eyelashes too. I know that's a shocker. <gasps> All right, okay, so now I'm finally ready to paint, which is great news because I love to paint. And I'm gonna teach you two more terms, big art words, which are tint and shade. And a tint is when you add white to a color. And what that does is it lightens it up a little bit. So a tint of red would be pink, it's lighter red. And a shade is when you add black to a color, it makes it a little bit darker. So a shade of red would be like a maroon color. And one thing about the tinting is it makes it stand out on this colored paper a little bit better. Um, I'll show you what I mean by that in just a moment. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pour my paint colors, give myself some options. And the best part about, ooh, oh, what was that? The best part about this project is your cowgirl or cowboy does not need to be realistic colors at all. You probably noticed that in some of those kid art pictures. Um, they even look more amazing if you give them purple hair and um, orange eyes. It's just fun. Okay, I think I've given myself some pretty good choices and I have my black and white so I can make any of my colors darker or lighter. And I still have all this extra room over here so I can mix up my colors. Um, I always forget to tell you guys what kind of paint to use, either acrylic or tempera. So you know, if it mattered, I would tell you. If So if I don't mention it, it doesn't matter. This one doesn't really matter. You could use acrylic or tempera paint. And when you go to paint, as usual, just make sure you drag all the extra water off your brush. We don't need any of that. And then if you choose to make a tint of a color, I usually scoop up a little bit of my white and scooch it over here. And then I'm gonna dip just the end of my brush in whatever color I'm trying to lighten up and mix it in. Cause I can always add more if it's not quite the color I'm going for, but I can't take it back out. So I, oh yeah, that's, I think I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. Oh, perfect. Looks like a creamsicle. Okay, but I always scoop up my white paint first and move it over. Uh, it's a lot harder to add the white into the orange. It just kind of absorbs it. So scoot your white over there and then slowly add your color of choice until you get just what you want. I think I'm going to use the orange. I guess I'm on orange paper, but um, I'm going to paint her shirt orange. Again, it doesn't have to be realistic colors. And I'm going to just paint right up to that thick black line I did, but not over it. This is going to look really cool when we're done because the orange paper will still be showing through everywhere. So it just adds another pop of color and a really interesting look to your line. Notice I'm kind of painting slowly around the edge of my shape first. And then that way I can fill in this area a little faster and I'm not worried about painting outside of my line. Okay. And then same thing. Let's give her, oh, I'm going to give her a turquoise hat. I'm going to add a little bit of white to help it show up on this paper a little better. Ooh, pretty, pretty. And then same thing. I'm gonna slowly, carefully trace around the edge of my shape. I'm gonna go right up to that dark outline, but not over it. 
still want that to show. It's another pop of color for us. Carefully around the shape and then fill in the middle a little bit faster. If you touch the line a little bit, that's all right. It's just you want to still be able to see it for the most part. Oh, I love that color. Do you think the cowgirl's going to like this? All right, and then fill in your M up here. See, I touched the line a little bit, but I'm not panicking. Probably could use a smaller brush. Mm, totally cool. And then what's great is you can paint the background in a different pop and color. And then after this dries, you can go over this paint um, with another color to add more detail. For example, on her shirt, after it dries, I want to go back in and paint um, some patterns on her shirt like she had on her shawl. And just add a little bit more color, more detail, more texture. So go ahead and finish up painting your cowgirl or cowboy in the background. Okay, a couple things to note. If you use green on the face, in my experience, it tends to make your cowgirl or cowboy kind of look like a witch, which is fine if that's what you're going for, but just a fair warning. Uh, the other thing is, if you do accidentally paint over part of your bold lines, like I accidentally painted a lot on her eyebrows, that's okay because after this is dry, you can come back with your chalk pastel and go right back over those lines and make them pop back out again. Um, I just realized I forgot to paint her lips, so I'll do that in just a moment. But uh, by now, my shirt already is dry, which is great. So I'm going to paint um, maybe like a simple plaid on her shawl here. And I'm going to do that by mixing a shade, which remember is adding a little bit of black to a color. It's going to darken it up. So I think I'm going to choose, let's see, maybe this teal again. And with this, you always want to mix starting with the lighter color. So in this case the teal is definitely lighter than the black so i'm going to scoop that one up and move it over and then i'm going to add hardly any black a little tiny bit of black goes a long way it just really soaks it up and changes everything oh that's kind of pretty there's a booger in there okay so just a smidge of black again you can always add a little more but you can't take it back out so take it easy go a little slowly and then i'm going to come over here and just do kind of a crisscross plaid Pattern to a few lines going in one direction, crisscrossed with a few lines going the opposite direction. Oh yeah, I like that. Add a little bit of detail. And then when everything else is dry, like I said, you can go back in with your bold line. Trace right back over it. Luckily, this paint dries pretty quick, so I think her eyebrows should probably already be ready. Just go right back over your line. Make all of her features pop back out. Same with the eyeball and the eyelashes. Mm -hmm. Alright, I think that looks pretty good, but as usual, you know I have to add a twinkle in her eye. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush, get a little more white paint. Oh geez, that's not white paint. Shake, shake, shake. And I'm gonna dip the end of my paintbrush, not the brush part, but the other end, the handle. Dip that in the white, and then right in that twinkle that we drew, I'm gonna stamp straight down. Straight up, straight down, straight up. Oh yeah, beauty. All right, I think that's about done. Uh, I'm kinda nervous, but I think I'm gonna go show it to the cowgirl. Hey, Miss Cowgirl, Miss Cowgirl, I finished my painting. What do you think? Well, there you have it. It's already time for the joke of the day. Why don't cowboys shoo the flies buzzing around them? Because it's easier to let them go barefoot. <laughs> have a great day and I'll see you soon.